been you guys it's Karen and I thought I would come and tell you a ghost story I'm not a believer in ghosts um, so I'm saying a ghost story it's some unusual goings on <laughs> in our lives and something that's unexplained still to this day um, I have done this video before if you by chance have followed me for probably five years or more you might you will have heard this story I did it in my car when I used to travel to the hospital I used to do vlogs uh, but I also put it over on my private channel which is Patreon I put it on there about three years ago but the footage isn't that great um, and it's one I'm happy to share publicly this one so um, this one is about when I had not long moved in with Kev my husband so we had only been dating a year or something like that just under a year actually and we were living in his house his flat which was a ground floor flat in a very very old building this building would have been built in the 1800s it had like his bathroom was like an add-on you know it would that would have been the coal cellar or something like that around about the time that these unusual things happened um my beloved nan had died um i don't talk about her as much as i used to but her name was Maisie, and she just was the love of my life you know she was amazing and i was devastated when she died so it was around about that time it was not long after that that this, this thing happened so this one night we had gone to bed and I should explain that our bedroom was on the left hand side of the house of the flat and adjacent to the bedroom was the kitchen dining room um, and it was a really big kitchen and it had a dining table and a couple of chairs and a, a wooden floor the nat he'd, he'd restored the natural wooden floors in the flat which were really nice in the middle part of the house then was cupboards um, and I think there was a study that was off the living room which was on the right hand side and then there was cupboards and then on the right hand side of the flat was a big living room that looked out onto the street and the bathroom was on that side as well so it was quite a long flat um, so we'd gone to sleep and about three o'clock in the morning I sat bolt upright because what I heard was a kitchen chair being dragged across the kitchen floor it was just a you know it was quick but it was very distinct to me that it was a kitchen chair being dragged across the kitchen floor now in the kitchen there was a big window that went into a, a real not used private garden that was part of the communal block so it would have been easy for somebody to break in without being seen so I had sat up but the the thing that really freaked me out is Kev also sat up and had heard something and obviously at this point we didn't know if he'd heard the same thing and I said to him did you hear that you know I was saying to him did you hear that and he said I just heard something <laughs> and it was quite comical really because I was saying to him why don't you get your golf club and he, he kept doing this and I was like what is he doing but when we later talked about it he was saying to me I can't do anything without my glasses <laughs> <laughs> he was later saying to me it'd be pointless in picking up my golf club if I don't have my glasses on it'd be like dumb and dumber you know so uh, because what we were thinking at that point was that somebody had broken in we thought somebody has got it somehow opened that window without us hearing and got in and is in the kitchen so anyway we sat I think he got his baseball bat because his baseball was under his bed uh, baseball bat was under his bed and we sort of stood by the door both listening and we were looking at each other going can't hear anything and it wasn't pitch black because he had a big window in his room as well so there was some light coming in but we didn't have any lights on or anything and so we're both sort of standing there seeing if we can hear anything else and we cannot hear a thing and so eventually we go out of the room go into the kitchen switch the light on nothing absolutely nothing and nobody there is nobody that went check out check out the flat nobody has the window is not moved the chair um by the dining table was pulled back but I can't swear that it was I can't swear that it wasn't left that way because you know I was like I said I had moved into his flat and it was those early stages where like I wasn't I hadn't put my mark on that flat yet or anything I don't know whether I would have tidied up the kitchen to that level before going to bed is what I'm saying so it could well have been that the chair was already out um, it's, it's unlikely it's more likely that I would have pushed all the chairs in before going to bed but you know I'm just saying that is a possibility like I said I, I am a real cynic it's not something that I necessarily believe in um, so we we checked everywhere and went back to bed and we were just like I asked him then what did you hear and he said I heard a chair being pulled out from the kitchen table and I was like me too and he was so freaked out because Kev is also not a believer but he's also 
because when he says he's scared I'm like but you don't believe in it so how can you be scared the same as me and he's like well because you just never know you know he's like I just prefer not to believe in it and he said but I just cannot explain that I don't know what it was um so the next bit I mean that's spooky enough as it is I I don't know how to explain that other than I mean it certainly wasn't anybody like in the flat above because these I mean the walls and, and floors were so thick you didn't hear a sound from any other flat it, it might have been some noise in the building that sounded like a chair being pulled out um but the next bit of the story Kev and I remember differently and what I've learned as the older I get the more I realize nobody's memory is really reliable like I'll remember something and and it's completely false you know and it can be something very small like oh I, I put that thing over there and then it's like well I didn't actually I put it away or you know um but his memory is that the next part happened the following night my memory is it happened that night um and to me what happened is we went back to bed we went back to sleep because it was like I said three o'clock in the morning and nothing had been disturbed and not much else to do um and then we are woken up again about an hour later or woke up again about an hour later and I don't remember what woke us up but I remember being awake and and talking to him um you know we were just chatting and like why are we awake oh god I can't sleep now you know that kind of thing and eventually we decided to get up because I think, I suppose it might have been like four or five o'clock by then and we were thinking of like, it's time to get up in an hour or so, we might as well get up now. We got up and Kev went through to the living room. Oh, well, he must've gone to the bathroom and, and then gone to the living room. And when he went into the living room, which was the other side of the house, his amplifier was pouring with smoke um, and then went on fire was about to go on fire I think it sparked I don't know whether it actually went on fire I've, there's still parts of the evening that I don't really remember much he told me he screamed at me to get into the hall because if the way that the flat was it would have been very difficult to get out of that the other windows and you know you don't know how how fast the fire can spread and this is an old flat and if it had come out into the hall it would have blocked the main door the main exit so it was like get out into the hall um and so yeah his amplifier had gone on on fire and so like I said in his mind it's the following night and he doesn't know why we woke up he said that we just woke up it was really weird in the middle of the night I think it was the same night as the chair moving he thinks it was the following night but regardless we woke up we agree that we woke up for no particular reason we ended up getting up he went into the living room you couldn't smell smoke in the hall or anything he didn't have any smoke alarms by the way like I said this was such an old flat and he wasn't really somebody that was that I don't know whether it's a man thing or whether it's just a Kev thing he's not really he's not a risk taker but neither is he like putting safety things in he is more so now but anyway there was no smoke alarm so something woke us up and if we hadn't have woken up there could have easily have been a very big house fire from that amplifier um I think he called the fire brigade and they came out like I said I, I can't remember after that um I must ask him. I meant to ask him last night and say did the fire brigade come out or did you put it out after it sparked or was it not actually on fire or you know what happened like um but I I like to think that it was my nan warning us of the fire and that's a very romantic if you like ideal idea um but that's what I like to think at the time I was like it must have been nan warning us about that fire and maybe which to me makes sense if it was on the same night because that she could have moved the chair so that we would know to get up and like the amplifier is about to go on fire. Actually, one of my viewers that has seen this video said at the time, could the noise have been the amplifier making some kind of sound, you know, before it started steaming and smoking and sparking, but but it's the, the living room was too far away. Like somebody could have climbed in the living room window and we wouldn't have heard it. It, it was way too far away. Like I said, it was a long flat that way and our bedroom was over here and the, the living room was way over here it's just you just wouldn't have heard it um so I don't know I we still to this day can't explain it there's that happened in that flat and also another incident with a film that where long story short I I dreamt about the film before we actually watched it and then when we were watching the movie Kev <laughs> actually screamed he'll hate me telling you this he screamed at one point in the movie and I was in fits of giggles because I'd never ever imagined he would scream and never seen him scream and it was just and he said it's just because it was so freaky to him that 
like I had never seen this film before it was called Donnie Darko I had never seen the film before but I had woke up I must have been sleeping during the day because it was that same day and I had woke up and had this awful dream and I told him this dream and like detail for detail it was a moment from the film and he was like how 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 did you dream that and it's I had not seen any adverts for this film. It was a girl at work that had told me about it and she hadn't told me anything about it. She was a big movie buff and I didn't mind knowing things about movies and you know, it wasn't the days of, you could just look it up on Google. Um, and she didn't, she didn't tell me anything about it other than it's a really good movie to watch. It was actually blooming scary. I didn't like it at all. But um, yeah, that was another incident that happened in that, that flat. And those were the only two things that happened there. Um, and if I ask him about it, he doesn't want to speak about it. He, he was honestly so freaked out by the night of the chair, the chair moving, that if I say, if I talk about it, he's like, yeah, let's not talk about that because it just freaks him out because he cannot find an explanation for it. And I mean, it does me, but, and I probably wouldn't speak about it if I was in that flat because we, we never spoke about it after because afterwards because we were like, I don't know what that was. And I mean, nothing bad happened. So like I said, for me, maybe that was my protective safety thing to think it was my nan warning us of the amplifier was about to go on fire you know because that was a nicer a nice thing to think about rather than anything really awful you know um anyway i hope that you enjoyed that sort of it's a sort of ghost story isn't it um there's a couple of other things that i could tell you about what the other two videos the other two kind of ghosty stories are um about my guardian angel i had two well three if you include ireland i had three experiences with a so-called guardian angel that again I, I just couldn't explain away I tried to explain it away because I am very very cynical you know I, I read about cold reading I learned about cold reading many years ago um, and so don't believe really in psychics or anything like that and but these are really really odd things that went on <laughs> um, um, but I think they're quite interesting as well so um, if you want me to come back and tell you about them please let me know um, the reason that I've been thinking about this lately is because since dad died there has been a couple of things happened but nothing major um, well there was one major thing that was horrible but I don't think that that was dad so since he died the, when I got his ashes I put them in the whole cupboard and I think I've already told you guys this or I've told people on one channel or another <laughs> The cupboard doors just opened, the whole cupboard doors just opened that night, like after me putting his ashes in the cupboard, because I didn't know what I was doing with them. I put them in the cupboard and Kevin and I were sitting watching TV and the, the cupboard opened and I sort of looked at him and I was like, did you hear that? And he was like, yeah, what was it? And I was like, it's the whole cupboard is open because I could see it. And it's not a, a cupboard that is free running. It's one you have to push to shut, if you know what I mean. So it won't just roll open <laughs> like it, it actually was pushed open and I was like oh my god is that not freaky I was like how has that happened and he said Kev's always got you know a way of explaining it away and he said oh it's the vibration probably from the girl running upstairs because here the flats there's a bit more vibration and the upstairs flat has a young girl in it and she is always running around and I went oh that's probably it but I was thinking that doesn't sound viable to me so anyway I went and shut it and I went and sat back down on the sofa and within about five minutes it did it again and the little girl wasn't running about and I said to okay, Kev, well, she wasn't running about this time and he was like, oh, well, it was some other kind of vibration, you know, he did not want to accept. That cupboard door had opened and we've been here 10 years and it has never just opened on its own and there's been lots of vibrations and whatnot, you know. And it, it was just weird because I had just put my dad's ashes in it. So anyway, I went and closed it and the following, it didn't happen again that night, but the following day I said to dad, I was, I'm always speaking to him and I said dad if that's you with that cupboard it's frightening me please don't do that and it never happened again it just happened that night and then that was it um and I think somebody had told me to say that to tell to say to dad you know you're frightening me please don't do that and actually that would be that would be very like my dad to do something that he thought would be funny or jokey but not realize that it would scare me he's done things like that before um in life <laughs> Um, so that happened but what's been happening recently is I got a beautiful piece of art from um, a YouTube friend her husband painted it and it says sail on silver girl which is you know what my dad used to say to me and I've got it on the wall now in a frame in the kitchen and I so that I sit where I sit having my dinner I can see this and I said to Kev I'm going to put it there and if it ends up upsetting me too much we might have to move it but every time I look at it it's lopsided <laughs> and again Kev's like vibrations and I'm like but 
None of the other pictures have moved. <laughs> There's another picture on that wall and we've never had to straighten it up at all. The picture is on a hook that where there was another, what I had there was one of these things that a jokey thing that said, Saturday the kitchen's closed, Sunday's takeout, you know, basically the, every day of the week, there's, there's no time for cooking kind of thing. And so, and that had never moved. Um, and yeah, there's pictures in the kitchen that we've, we've never had to touch, but this one, it just keeps going lopsided and I keep straightening it. And it's not like the height of Kev's head or shoulder or anything, like it's above that height, you know? So it, it just makes me smile because I'm like, well, what is that? You know, what is it? I don't know what it is. I, I can't say, I think my dad is moving a picture because to me that sounds ridiculous just because I'm, like I said, I'm so cynical, but, maybe it is that's what the psychics would say isn't it they and, and believers you would say yeah that's him communicating and trying not to frighten me by opening doors the the other there was a couple of other things that one of them i think i know is my mind and it's i got a little key ring somebody sent me a key ring and i got a little photo to put in this key ring and i was standing in the kitchen and i noticed that there is a part of my kitchen sideboard that looks like there's a photo of dad in it. This sounds really crazy, but I'll see if I can get a side-by-side -side photo to show you, but it, it looks so similar. It's almost as if the picture is imprinted in the sideboard. But with that, I can at least see that that would be my mind doing that. You know, my mind will see my dad now, once he's gone, I knew that that would happen. Like I'll see reminders and things of my dad everywhere, you know, and things that are not necessarily the case. Like, you know, I've had Robin's appearing everywhere and they do say that you know robins appear when you need them and robins appear when somebody's died and they come to comfort you and i never noticed robins before but i did i have just put like a bird thing up on my window and i have had recently started getting interested in birds um i never knew about the robins and you know being a comfort after somebody died so it's not like i was expecting that but that's more explainable. The worst thing that happened was I had a, the most horrific dream that I can't even, I can't even put it into words. It was so horrific. It was a nightmare, I guess. And it was like somebody was trying to pull me through the headboard into hell. And it was, it doesn't even sound that scary, but when you're actually, it's happening, there was these skeleton hands coming out and trying to pull me in. And Kev actually woke me up and he's like, oh my God, he's like, you were wailing. And it happened like like I went back into the dream. It happened twice and he woke me up again. And he said, do you want to get up? I'm like, we'll have a cup of tea or something, you know? And I was like, no, I'll just like snuggling closer to you, you know? I just about threw myself on top of Kev and was like, oh, you protect me. <laughs> it was just horrible. And I don't know how I think that that was, it, it, it was obviously related to dad because I, I must've been thinking about, you know, afterlife and that kind of thing. Um, right, anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling now. Hopefully you enjoyed that. One well, other thing to tell you about, I have put this notebook, I've created this notebook and it is on Amazon for sale. So this says not for resale there because this is my proof, but if you take that away, that's what it looks like. So it is a zebra and it says zebra and the characteristics of a zebra are freedom, balance and individuality. Um, and I thought that was just quite nice. I like zebras. This channel is life as a zebra because of having a rare disease because when they tell when they train doctors they say if you hear hooves think horses not zebras meaning think it's normally something common it's not normally a rare disease so that's why anybody with a rare condition um, considers themselves a zebra as Ehlers Danlos is a rare disease which is why this is life as a zebra um, so yeah I just thought it would be a fun thing to do so I created this little notebook it's just a paperback you can't put a hard cover on on Amazon um, and I've put lined pages inside with little zebras on the bottom Isn't that cute it's £5.99 in the UK I can't remember the prices on on Amazon.com etc but I will link it in the description in case you are interested and as obsessed with notebooks as I am